So I got everything set up for the office or wherever. I got my actual portable AC unit or wherever hooked up to my window and stuff like that so I can cool off the office. I finally got it, thank God. And uh, I had to move some things around. So the backdrop is gonna be back there, which is really easy for me because I can just grab my camera and set up a product back there. And it's actually in a better spot, I would say, um, room wise or wherever. So I moved some things around. I got the young new 11 millimeter lens, trying out the angle wherever, shooting an S-Log3 on the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. But if you have seen one of my videos in the past, I've made three of them and I'll leave a audio mixer, I would say playlist down in the description of stuff I've covered in the past. But what I've noticed is, and I've been made painfully aware that Beacon released their own little audio mixer kind of thing that's in direct comparison to the, I would say Elgato Wave XLR. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I'm very, very tempted to get it, but it, it's overpriced like all their products. I've I explained why the Beacon uh, whole company ecosystem wherever is overpriced you can go watch my low profile boom arm video that i did or wherever i exposed them for charging 120 dollars for their low profile boom arm when the same microphone boom arm is from like four or five different other companies and the lowest price i found was 50 dollars, and it's literally the same microphone boom arm the only thing they did was change the logo on the side of it and if that doesn't tell you right then and there that the rest of their products are also overpriced, then I don't know what to tell you. And from what I've seen, regardless of how company, I would say content creators have been trying to hype up Beacon's products and like the whole debacle about how they were in the discord with Epo's box and all that stuff. Like if you, if you get into all that stuff, you would know that, you know, the company's meh, you know what I'm saying? But the build quality from that little thing or wherever I've seen, especially charging that much, just seeing how some people have handled it you know clicking it and everything and seeing how hollow and just bad it like sounds and looks as far as like being cheaply made especially for the price they're charging you don't dump on the materials used on gear but for 249 dollars this thing does feel a bit toyish it's not as bad as zoom plastic but it is still very much plastic you can feel it's kind of hollow too the UI on it is very simple, which is a good thing. Just an XLR, a headphone jack, and two USB jacks, meaning you can use multiple setups. And lastly, the knob does feel good and it's nice and clicky. So future editing squid here, I wanna go ahead and say, yes, I know the shot looks off because I have some studio lights turned off as well as the AC unit going, but I did wanna let you guys know, I'll leave the Dark Corner Studios review down in the description. So definitely check it out. It goes over the software and some more important technical specs and talking about the device with no fluff or whatever just being an honest review and that's why i recommend watching it if you're interested in picking up the device but my overall thoughts just watching that segment or wherever alone i've seen the video multiple times but the overall build quality it seems like a 50 dollars audio mixer i think what you're mostly paying for when it comes to this thing is the software access um just like how elgato does with the wave xlr but with that it's obviously a better i would say build quality this thing is giving me i would say lesser of a build quality than even the fine fine sc3 the like 50 dollars, 60 dollars audio mixer that they released um unfortunately that audio mixer doesn't have software but that's the build quality on that seems way better than in this beacon studio at 249 dollars yeah 249 dollars for a crappy build quality that looks like a 50 dollars device if if that I'm, I'm just i'm just being honest uh i don't know how anybody can just gloss over that and i'm glad dark corner studios did bring out the build quality of it but saying that he liked the clickiness of it and hearing the click or wherever I, I just, I don't know how people can just be okay with it and justifying the price because the software is good. Uh, then why does the physical device need to be $249? You, you see what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Even with Elgato and their budget microphones that they just dropped, the Neo set or wherever it was, uh, they get access to the software and those microphones and the, the stream deck and the webcam, like all that stuff or wherever, is below a hundred dollars and yes i have my gripes about elgato but make it make sense 249 dollars for this thing i don't know how people can defend a company is doing stuff like that blatantly I, ju I just don't know just visibly watching regardless on how people try to dress it up it looks it looks terrible in comparison to the wave xlr like the wave xlr i will admit that the build quality at least my personal opinion having it for years 
it's you know what I'm saying I, I could see that it could be around a hundred and something dollars you know what I mean I've d done multiple videos talking about people saying for me to get the beacon stuff over to Elgato wave if I've had so much problems with the wavelength software which I continuously have them um, just the other day I was recording a video and I mentioned in the video that it somehow just crashed on my PC. I wasn't aware of it. So I had to go back and re-record a part. And when I went back to go re-record a part, for some reason, after I opened up the Wavelink software, it is my fault for not checking and looking, but it's never done that before. But all my audio sources were muted. So nothing was being captured or wherever. It was just the video because I was recording the OBS you can see right there. Um, so that's a problem like i said i could solve that by recording internally into the camera as a backup or something like that but it's like i shouldn't have to do that because i have this setup to where everything is just recorded into obs all my camera angles all the stuff that i do wherever they're just my cameras are just hooked up to hdmi um capture cards and my microphones are going through the cameras you know stuff like that and it just makes it easier and seamless using you know obs to do that stuff and obviously i already have stream decks and stuff so the only thing that I can think of is, like I said, moving my audio uh, choice over to Beacon. And that Beacon XLR system, like I said, is super expensive for what it is, and especially in 2024, in my personal opinion, because at that price point and stuff like that, I probably would just save up a little bit more and probably go with the Go XLR like refurbished used or something like that if I could. Um, just because you're going to get more physical controls on the overall device and the software has been around and tested and tried and true for years. And yes, you know, they're a little bit behind because they're just adding like sub mixes and stuff, but at least, you know what I'm saying? I, at least there will be more informational videos out there for the consumer because again, the product has been out for so long, whereas even on my older videos, I talked about not getting the beacon stuff because I've read personally like support comments and reviews and stuff like that. I'm not talking about like from big content creators and YouTube YouTubers who have hyped this up. I'm talking about like the average consumer who would use it just like I would for content creation, streaming, all that stuff. They've had nothing but just really bad complaints about the software and the bugginess of it the crashing the, the the blue screening of pcs and stuff similar to elgato but it seems to be worse you know what i'm saying but the thing about it is is that when i make those videos and make those comments i've been seeing people in the comment section of my videos ranting and raving about you know the beacon software and their products saying they're the best thing pretty much since the holy grail you know what i mean like i and i'm like I don't know if I want to pull the trigger on it because the bad stuff that people have experienced, it outweighs all these glowing reviews, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not one of those people who are going to fall for the hype but from content creators or wherever out there. But every time a company like Beacon or something like that releases a product and they target specific content creators only to review their products so they know they're going to get those positive reviews, again, because they're brand safe. And, you know, they don't care about the actual consumer while in on this stuff because they're getting the products for free. And that's how they keep up, you know, their their bad reputation as a content creator or whatever. But people just they fall in love with these guys for some reason when they do that kind of stuff or wherever. It's it's a, it's obvious to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you need to take, you know, psychological classes like I did or wherever to, to deduce that these people are, are, you know, lying straight to your face. But apparently the common person falls for it all the time. And I've seen the comments where people have said, you know, I fell for it because, you know, X, Y, and Z content creator said I should get it. Everybody was hyping it up, you know, because it was from the Gold XLR team, all this stuff or wherever. Pretty much everything that you see in a glowing review about it, people fell for it. So they end up purchasing their microphone, you know, the, the, the cr mix create, whatever it is, and now the studio coming out and everything. But the thing about it and the reason why I kind of want to try it is because at this point, dealing with the Wave uh, 1 microphone and having its issues and problems with the Wavelink software and then upgrading to the Wave XLR and having its problems and issues with the software and even close friends of mine that, you know, I stream with, I play games with and stuff like that, that I know in the community, they never have a problem with the Wave XLR stuff. So I don't know if it's just me, you know what I'm saying? 
I looked up and made sure that I wasn't making any issues or faults or doing anything wrong. So I can assure you I'm not, um, especially being somewhat of a, I would say software savvy person, because that's pretty much what I did in the military for, you know, my extent in there and then being a streamer and content creator for so long, working with software and stuff like that. I'm not like technology. A technological like illiterate you know what I mean like I know what I'm doing it's just when the only thing I probably don't know really is cameras because I haven't really messed with cameras or whatever but I'm getting into that learning that probably like PC hardware that's about it but software it's it's easy for me you know what I'm saying give me a few minutes two hours or wherever and I'm I'm, I'm gliding through stuff that's what is kind of making me wonder should I go with the beacon stuff and try it out um, for one I think now that I'm deeply thinking about it and been mulling it over for a while and seeing, you know, them dropping that that little audio mixer, I probably won't pick that up. Um, I'm still debating on just using the Wave XLR and having it over here on my studio desk so I can use an XLR microphone to record my videos and stuff and still have my sub mixes and everything set up. But what I would use is their actual microphone for streaming and that's because you know everything is done on the microphone or wherever through the usb i'm gonna have to have the software open anyways and that's why i was like if i move the xlr over here that's going to be another software i have to have open wherever when it comes to the beacon stuff or wherever so it's like should i just kind of convert over to getting the beacon studio thing or wherever as well as the microphone so that way i can have the microphone over there and I can have a dual microphone setup or whatever because I can have the XLR microphone over here. You, you see what I'm getting at? Because right now, in order to run this microphone, which is a wireless shotgun microphone, I have to have the microphone itself or the wireless receiver plugged into the camera and then being brought into Wavelink and then it's uh, EQ'd. You see, you see what I'm saying? Or any other microphone. Or if I wanted to use a traditional microphone over here, like a dynamic condenser or whatever it may be, I have to run a super long XLR cable all the way over to my desk, unplug this microphone and then plug it in and then record over here. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So I wouldn't have to do that if I just had the beacon system over here and then had the beacon mic over there and just use the beacon software. And when it comes to controlling the sub mixes and stuff, unfortunately, like I said, that Beacon Mix Create is super expensive, but I mean, at that point, if I had the microphone, and other things, you see what I'm saying? So you get trapped into the ecosystem, kind of like with Elgato or just any other company who kind of does this whole ecosystem support thing or whatever that they do. I don't know. That's my thought process. That's why I kind of want to try it out. But when you sit there and you add up all those things and you see how expensive that is, you, you see what I'm saying? And just can't pull the trigger on it because knowing that their stuff is overpriced you know what i'm saying like i said before with their low profile boom arm being 120 dollars when there's multiple different companies who have the same microphone boom arm and the lowest i found was 50. you know what i mean and then on top of that like i said my comment sections when people have said negative things about the beacon and not only that but seeing the, all the negative reviews out there and it's like you have to weed through the, the the fluff and the only way i would do that is if you know beacon actually sent out the stuff and i could test you know what i'm saying even if i had to send it back then i could possibly justify but even if i was to keep it or wherever to test i would need to use it for months y you see what i'm saying because that's the only way i would know because i've had so much time with the the you know the wavelink software and everything like that it's like it might be good for a couple days or a couple weeks you know what i'm saying and then i start seeing the flaws but by then i might not know because if they send it out and they expect it back you, you, you see what i'm saying and on top of that because i've talked about you know the overpriceness of their products and stuff like that nine times i did that company ain't gonna work with me you know what i mean they're not gonna want to send anything out like i'm not expecting the company to like win me over but it's like i want the product just to work you know what i'm saying i want to be able to get these tools and just be able to do my job you, you know what i'm saying and like i said the frustrations with the wavelength software trying to add vsts 
and everything like that and then like i said if you open up the vsts that are from elgato on another monitor that's not your primary monitor then it freezes up the wavelink software and you have to force quit it in task manager and reopen it that's one issue that i'm running into as far as uh having it on a non-primary monitor and like i said before the stream deck software because of a update that happened at this point a long time ago i cannot do anything as far as tweaking it or even using the stream decks if the window is open on any other monitor than my primary monitor i know all this would be really solved if i just got a more i would say expensive audio interface like like I said, the Mackie DLZ Creator XS, that's the one that I think would be my entry level into that kind of mixers or wherever. But like I said, that thing's so expensive, you know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's why I just picked up the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II because I feel like I'm gonna get more use out of that or wherever and I can really justify the cost of it because that thing is just gonna sit on desk. It might be nice and all that stuff, you know, multiple microphone inputs. It has pretty much everything I need. It just doesn't have software for the submixes. So I still would be having to use the Wavelink software. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the problem is like I want a software that has a physical device that I can control. Like I said in other videos, being able to control the overall mix versus what I'm hearing versus what my stream's hearing, having the physical controls on the device itself. I seen what they did with the stream deck uh, plus or wherever, adding the Wave XLR component in the back and the USB stuff where I seen that stuff, but I still would have to use the Wavelink software. And like I said, at this point, I am getting so av like just aggravated. And the thing that kind of pushes me over the edge a little bit is when I make videos like this and I see the comments, there's so many people saying that they never have an issue with any of these products. And I'm uh, like, I always say like, fine, you know, it's good for you, but why is it always gotta be me having these issues? You know what I'm saying? Why is none of these companies rectifying this? Or why am I seeing nothing but these, you know, fake content creators faking the stuff wherever for the brands and everything like that and not really telling the consumer there's going to be problems and issues and there's glaring problems issues like i said with the elgato wavelength software that is a glowing issue to have that's not acceptable you know what i'm saying as a content creator as a streamer stuff that's not acceptable the complaints about the beacon software and all this stuff and how much both of these companies are charging for the devices just to get access to their software and stuff that stuff is not acceptable and people who are reviewing their products are just brushing them off. Like if you watch one of them, I'm not even going to name the guy's name because I've showed him off before in another video. But if you watch one of his review or wherever of the little new beacon thing or wherever, he talked about, you know, some of the cons or what people were complaining about, like the microphone or the software and all that stuff. And it's like he just kind of glossed over it, kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know, and they said this, but it's, you know, what I'm saying I'm like. You can't downplay these people's bad experiences on overpriced products that you're trying to peddle. You, you, know, you know, it's just because it's to this point to where these devices are just the prices are just going up and the return on investment as far as from the software to build quality, what the device can do literally for streamers, content creators, all that stuff. The, that quality is going down, but the prices of these devices are going up. And I'm just sitting here like, why? What are you what are you giving me? You know what I'm saying? What are you giving me that justifies paying 200 and something dollars, 100 and something dollars? You know what I'm saying? Like, what am, what am I getting? I'm just getting the tagline. This is for streamers. This is for content creators. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how people fall for it, but hopefully you guys continue to have a squid task today. If you found this video, you know, informational or informative in any way shape or form consider leaving a like if you're new to the channel and you want to support me and consider subscribing or even joining the channel as a membership thank you to the members that i have already um you'll get added to the video as, as you know people join and everything like that and with that being said y'all take care have a squid day god bless you and yours and deuces everybody much love